Hello my precious everyone, welcome back to Wow Mel. Today I'm filming in my room, so don't mind this metal literally behind me. A bit of a fresh look for my channel, that's just cause downstairs is not available. Today I am beginning my armor series. I'm going to be making foam armor for my character Celestis Elrond. She's my Dungeons and Dragons character. I already made a video explaining who she is and how I put my other cosplay for her together. So if you haven't seen those yet, be sure to check those out. But I was only halfway happy with her cosplay. Celestis is a paladin, which means 99% of the time she's wearing armor and the cosplay I made for her, she was just in like a casual maiden outfit is sort of what I called it. In fact, she wouldn't even wear that too often because when she's not in her armor, she's usually going to some sort of noble event and wears bit of a fancier dress than that. So I'm actually gonna try to sew her dress as well, but that is not what this series is about. It is about my attempts to make a full suit of armor for Sylvestis. I've never actually hand made anything. My last cosplay, I got different pieces from all over the place and just kind of put them together and use the cosplay that way, which is a totally fine and valid way to do it. But in terms of armor, purchasing or commissioning someone to do it can be really expensive. It can be hundreds and even thousands of dollars to pay someone to make you foam armor when the materials to make it yourself can be like a hundred and under. That's the way I'm going for it. I am very intimidated as it seems very difficult to start, which is why I wanted to take you guys on this journey with me. Not only so I can stay motivated to actually do it, but also in case you guys are interested in making foam armor or foam props or any sort of thing in that realm, you can watch me learn from my mistakes see how I'm gonna do it and just be inspired to see, hey, if another beginner is willing to do it, then maybe you should go for it too. I honestly don't have a ton of reference material for what Sylvester's armor should look like. I have reference photos for her, but she's not exactly in full armor. At least it doesn't look like full armor to me. Maybe what I'm gonna make isn't gonna wind up being full, full armor, but like mostly there. I, I, I know very little about armor itself, so I'm hoping maybe I'll learn a bit more through this experience as well. My little sister drew Sylvestis and I would like her to be in something like this. She based this drawing off of the mini that I made for Sylvestis, I believe. It looks a little something like this. Well, it's hard to focus on her because her, honestly, her facial features are kind of blurry. Her armor is supposed to be protective, but I wanted it to be feminine because Sylvester's is actually a very feminine character who is all about showing you can be very feminine and very strong at the same time. So I wanted to make sure that her armor reflected the more feminine aspects of herself. So now that you know who I am going to be making and very roughly what it should wind up looking like, I can begin the actual process. Today is all about researching, prepping supplies, and patterns. I'm not going to be physically making anything that will begin happening in the later installments, but this stage is extremely vital because I can't make anything if I don't have anything. One thing I do have now is I went to like Joanne Fabrics and got this. It's just patterns for foam armor. So I'm going to be using this, but it didn't completely suit my needs because this whole area is just like pants. I definitely want to add some sort of skirt-like armor piece. So I looked online for more patterns that I can use and I will show you some of what I found now. I found this from Kenpatsu Cosplay. It really had a lot of what I was looking for. It came with, most importantly, that little skirt piece that I really wanted to add. It also has those boots, which is basically exactly what I gave Sylvestis in all of my concept art for her in the mini from Hero Forge. She had these like heeled armor boots that looked absolutely sick and so that is in this set. Um, I might wind up using the breastplate from here or I might wind up using it from my other piece. 
but I am definitely going to purchase these patterns so I can use them to create my armor along with the pattern that I got from Joanne Fabrics and kind of uh, mix and match it around. You can create your own patterns if you need. I heard there's a method that you can like put plastic wrap around yourself and then wrap it with duct tape and mark where you want everything to be on yourself. That however is even a little bit more advanced than I was hoping for as a very first project which taking on basically an entire armor as a first project is pretty bold so I didn't want to make it even more difficult by making all the patterns myself uh, but I am gonna mix and match things how I see fit and I'm also going to customize the pieces with my own design. They'll give me the basic shape but I'll change it for how I want hers to look. Along with that, I am also going to be purchasing the Book of Foam Armor. Even if you were to look into foam armor for like a single day, the name Kamui Cosplay would probably come up because she is an amazing cosplayer who creates all sorts of beautiful masterpieces out of like EVA foam and Warbla and just all sorts of cool things. She uses like LED lights and stuff. Sorry, I need to calm down. She not only creates amazing pieces, but she is super friendly. She has written multiple books to aid beginners and advanced cosplayers alike to create their own creations. So I'm actually going to purchase one of her books. I'm going to get the physical version because I don't really want to be looking at a computer while I'm dealing with like heat guns and stuff. I already looked at one of her free mini guides because she has them on her site and it looked very like straightforward. It was super reassuring and gave me a lot of confidence that I would be able to pull this off so I highly recommend checking her out, checking out her books. She also has patterns and things on her site and she has YouTube videos as well which I will also be referencing when I'm making the actual armor. If you're going to be making foam armor you will also need a heat gun. Luckily I have a friend who's dabbled a little bit in EVA foam armor making and he already has a heat gun so he's gonna let me use his which is super great and will save me some money. Along with that, however, you will need the actual foam. I'm going to be using EVA foam instead of Warbla. Warbla is more expensive. It's a bit more flexible. I have never used Warbla. This is just what I've heard at least. And Warbla, you can actually stick the pieces together just using the heat gun. EVA foam, however, is a lot cheaper and the, although I heard it can be a little bit more difficult to use, once you master it, it becomes like a lot more convenient than Warbla, which can get kind of expensive and I heard heavy if you're making armor pieces. There are different millimeter thicknesses for EVA foam. I'm going to be using 5 millimeter. However, you can get it from like 1 to 10 and maybe even higher. I believe 5 is pretty standard, but it also probably depends on what sort of piece you're going to be making. So make sure you pay attention to what size EVA foam you're getting before you actually buy it. You can get EVA foam pretty cheap and like order it in bulk from Amazon, but I know not everyone likes to use Amazon. You can also get it at like more local craft stores. It's not super rare to come across EVA foam so you'll likely be able to find some and if not you can totally just order it online. You can get pretty decent sized slabs of it for like under $15. Compared to the hundreds you would be dishing out to commission a piece like this, uh, definitely worth it. So to put it all together, I highly recommend picking out templates and patterns. There are some even free online. You can literally look up like armor templates, armor templates for cosplay, things like that. I did like female plate armor. I really recommend Kamui Cosplay. You can get cool stuff from all over the place. Etsy has some as well if you want to support more small businesses, which is really cool. And if you want to create your own patterns yourself, you can use the plastic wrap and duct tape method. After that, you have to make sure you have your materials. I, of course, will need paints in the future because once you make your armor, it's still gonna look like foam. A lot of the realism comes from the way you paint it. I heard using spray paints is quite helpful but you have to make sure the area is properly ventilated or it can get kind of toxic so you have to be really careful about that. And then of course you need a heat gun to bend the foam and adhesive to stick it together. I hear contact cement is pretty good for keeping EVA foam together. I honestly also hear that Gorilla Glue and like hot glue is fine. Hot glue might melt the foam a little bit so you could potentially melt it together and keep it more secure that way. Don't quote me on this of course because I have not yet tried. You will also need an exacto knife 
to cut the foam pieces. I will update the second part of this video once all my supplies come in. Hope you guys will join me on this journey of creating Sylvester's armor. Well, hopefully at the end, it will turn out super cool. And if it turns out super bad, hopefully you'll at least know what not to do. Thank you for joining me today, my precious everyone. I love you very much. I will catch you in the next video. Bye.